welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about ARDS so what exactly is ARDS it is acute A stands for acute respiratory distress syndrome okay acute respiratory distress syndrome ARDS so this ARDS is also called as hyaline membrane disease hyaline membrane disease so what exactly is this hyaline membrane okay what exactly is this hyaline membrane and like what is this disease so in the name itself it's there it's an acute respiratory distress okay suddenly okay within a very short period of time there is a respiratory distress that's happening okay now in this ARDS the first important point which I want you to know is there is a diffuse alveolar damage okay diffuse not in one particular place there is a diffuse entirely there is alveolar damage that is happening why damage how it is going to be damaged that we will discuss don't worry about that but the first point is in ARDS there is diffuse alveolar damage okay diffuse alveolar damage that is happening okay now what else sir See, in this condition ARDS, there is a rapid onset of widespread inflammation within the lungs. Okay, there is a rapid onset. Why it is happening? We will discuss. Rapid onset, widespread inflammation. Okay, rapid onset, widespread inflammation. Where? In lungs. So, this inflammation is the one which is going to cause the damage. Okay. So, how I used to remember the ARDS is look A R D S A for see in ARDS A is standing for acute okay but what you will see the x-ray finding when you take the x-ray there will be bilateral infiltrates is going to be seen. So, abnormal chest x-ray A for abnormal chest x-ray. So, what is that abnormality? It's a bilateral, not in lung, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. Okay, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates are going to be seen. That also I will show you the image. Next, R. R stands for rapid in onset. Okay, rapid in onset, not a chronic thing. Rapidly, it's going to start very quickly. Rapid in onset. Next, D. D stands for decreased. See, decreased. PaO2 by FiO2 ratio is the answer, the number is going to be less than 300. Okay, so the patient is going to have persisting hypoxia. The PaO2 by FiO2 value is going to be less than 300. So the person is having this is the very important keyword. The person is having persistent hypoxia, which means even you give the mask, the ventilator. Okay, you are giving the oxygen by the ventilator but still his oxygen saturation levels will not increase there is going to be persistent continuously whatever you try to do you in, you are intervening but still the hypoxia is going to be there it is persistent hypoxia is going to be there why we'll discuss okay so abnormal chest x-ray rapid in onset decrease in decrease pao2 by fa fao2 value and s for see whatever the symptoms are there Okay, whatever the symptoms later we'll discuss you know this is a lung problem right so what are the symptoms hemoptysis will be there uh, there can be dyspnea, there can be tachypnea, okay, these problems. So, the symptoms are not due to, they are not due to heart failure, they are not due to heart failure. See, whenever there is a left-sided heart failure, there is a, back, there is a development of the back pressures that can lead to pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema, true. But here, these symptoms are not because of the heart failure. Heart is absolutely, absolutely normal. There is no cardiomyopathy. There is no infarction. There is nothing. Heart is absolutely normal. There is no fluid overload. But there is problem happening at the level of lungs. Widespread inflammation in the lungs. Diffuse alveolar damage is occurring. Okay. So, symptoms are not due to heart failure or fluid overload. Okay. Next, now you can ask me, what are the symptoms, sir? What are the symptoms that are seen? You already know the symptoms. 
the clinical features are going to be hypoxia or hypoxemia is going to be there dyspnea tachypnea cyanosis the patient is going to be cyanotic because oxygenation is not properly happening okay the carbon dioxide is also not properly getting out of the body so cyanosis cyanosis now why the problem sir okay we understood there is some damage happening to the lungs diffuse damage happening in the lungs okay widespread inflammation happening in the lungs why what is the problem sir see here this here this is the important point the problem starts here see the problem is sepsis see there is sepsis in the body okay there is sepsis that is the most common cause of ARDS sepsis okay septicemia are direct injuries to the lung what are the direct injuries to the lung aspiration okay there can be aspiration or trauma to the lungs okay trauma to the lungs or pneumonia infection so these are the direct damages to the lung pneumonia trauma aspiration or there can be indirectly also indirectly there is the inflammation happening in the body because of the sepsis or because of pancreatitis okay or the patient can have direct injury to the lungs when the patient is drowning or in certain conditions so because of this condition see these are the triggers okay these are the triggers now these triggers do you know what they do whenever there is aspiration or trauma or some infection do you know what they will do they are going to first activate the macrophages the macrophages are going to be activated macrophage activation now the macrophages whatever are present in the alveolus whenever they are activated now these macrophages they will start to produce cytokines like interleukin 1 6 8 tuber necrosis factor alpha transforming growth factor beta see these are the cytokines that are going to be produced of course there are other cytokines also but the major things the major things interleukin 1 6 8 tuber necrosis factor alpha and transforming growth factor beta these are the cytokines which are going to be produced by the macrophages alveolar macrophages now these chemicals these cytokines what they will do is they will cause the neutrophilic recruitment now they are the ones which are calling the neutrophils into the lungs okay there is neutrophil recruitment neutrophil recruitment so the neutrophils i will show all the steps in the image also the neutrophils are going to come into the lungs neutrophil recruitment into the alveolus so this neutrophil whatever have came do you think is going to sit calmly like a good boy no definitely not neutrophil sir it's going to produce reactive oxygen species it's going to produce proteases proteases now this reactive oxygen species proteases all these chemicals which are getting activated in the lungs okay what happens is at the end of the day there will be endothelial damage okay these toxic mediators like reactive oxygen species and the proteases are the ones responsible for endothelial damage capillary endothelium capillary endothelium is getting damaged okay and even the basement membrane the alveolar basement membrane alveolar capillary membranes are getting damaged okay so because of this endothelial damage now what happens now the fibrin see the fibrin was supposed to be present in the pulmonary capillaries pulmonary blood vessels now the fibrin which was supposed to be present in the pulmonary capillaries now this fibrin will start to leak into the alveolus let me show you the things which we have discussed so far see the person is having some injury maybe because of infection fungi trauma aspiration okay aspiration into the lungs because of something there is trauma now what is going to do it is going to see it is going to activate alveolar macrophages response to the injury injury response now this macrophages what they will do the macrophages now they are activated now these macrophages they will start to produce it, tnf interleukins interleukin 6 interleukin 8 okay so this cytokines are going to be produced by the inflammatory mac uh, like activated macrophages so now once this macrophages are activated now what they will do these chemicals will signal the recruitment of the neutrophils so the neutrophils see from the blood the neutrophils now they started to enter into the lungs now in their way what they will produce is they produce different types of chemicals which will cause the endothelial damage the endothelial damage is occurring okay so endothelial damage and there is also alveolar damage 
So the fibrin which was supposed to be the fibrin, the clotting protein, the fibrin which was supposed to be present in the blood vessels, now that fluid which is rich in fibrin is going to leak into the alveolus. Now what this fibrin will do? The fibrin will settle down, right? At the end of the day, fibrin is going to settle down. Okay, settle down. And that fibrin is going to form the hyaline membrane. So this fibrin leak into the alveoli. Right? Let me write here. Endothelial damage. So that's causing fibrin leak into alveoli okay fibrin leak into the alveoli so this fibrin is going to form a pack okay a plaque kind of thing so that's the hyaline membrane hyaline membrane now the, what is the problem with this hyaline membrane okay there is a hyaline membrane okay okay now what's the problem with this hyaline membrane so this is a fibrin right fibrin material it's like a clot material now do you think Will there be proper gases exchange that's going to happen now? Will there be a proper gases exchange that can happen? No, this fibrin, even though you are giving the ventilatory support, but yes, oxygen is going into the lungs, but not getting exchanged because all the alveoli are totally just they are painted with this fibrin. So, what happens is it prevents the oxygen exchange. Silent membrane prevents oxygen exchange. Okay, prevents oxygen exchange. So, because of this, even you try to uh, give the mechanical ventilation, like you know, the sorry, the ventilation like by support, there will be still persistent hypoxia. Okay, still the patient is going to have persistent hypoxia. Okay, so whenever you see the word persistent hypoxia, think about acute respiratory distress syndrome, widespread inflammation in the lungs. Macrophages activated, neutrophils activated, endothelial da damage, pneumocyte damage, fluid leaking into the alveolus, okay, edema is occurring in the alveolus, okay, and the fibrin is going to get deposited within the alveolus, not one single to two alveolus, widespread, widespread. So, there is going to be respiratory distress. Uh, why respiratory distress is one more thing. See, because of this endothelial damage, there is also edema, okay, there is also edema seen. Okay. Edema is there. So fluid is entering into the lungs, so edema is there. So what this edema is going to do, it is going to wash off surfactant, going to wash off surfactant in the lungs. So when the surfactant is washed off, what happens? The surfactant, see, because of the widespread damage, see, the fluid is entering into the lung and again fluid comes out of the lung. So, the surfactant is also getting washed out of the lungs. So, because of this, what happens? What do you think? The lungs will become collapsed. The lungs will undergo collapse. So, surfactant wash off that will cause collapse. Okay. So, that is going to cause respiratory distress. Respiratory distress. Okay. So, these are some important points which I want you to know. Now, look here. This is the lung with uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Here you can very clearly see this is the airspace. Okay, this is the airspace. Now in this airspace, see here what is this? What is this pink color material? So this pink color material is nothing but the fibrin. Here you can clearly see, you can see very clearly that see, there is a deposition of this pink color material. This is nothing but the fibrin. Okay, fibrin is like like a, is now it's like a membrane. It's like a membrane. Fibrin deposition. Here also they go. And you can also see a lots and lots of blood cells. Okay, the blood is getting leaked into the alveoli. Lots and lots of blood cells are there and lots of inflammatory cells are there. Okay, so it's a widespread diffuse inflama uh, widespread inflammation causing diffuse alveolar damage leading to the pulmonary edema, leaking of the proteins into the lungs. So that's going to cause the respiratory distress. Now, if you look here on x-ray, what you can see bilateral, see in ARDS, A stands for what? Abnormal x-ray. So, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates are seen. Look here. See in both the lungs, the lung fields are not clear, they are not black. You can see this uh, whitish color. Okay, whitish color. See, that's nothing but see the fluid accumulation. The fluid is getting accumulated. Okay, widespread inflammation. So fluid is getting accumulated. So that's why there is bilateral pulmonary infiltrates that can be appreciated. So this is the pathogenesis behind the acute pulmonary, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. In the next video, we'll be discussing about 
pneumonia okay different types of pneumonia what are the different causes of pneumonia okay what are the clinical features in different types of pneumonia typical pneumonia typical pneumonia okay the stages of pneumonia that will be discussed in the next video hope the video is helpful thank you